Hey, it's Tony from Hurricane Wind Power here, host of the Hurricane Tony Show. Today I want to show you a couple products that we've had for a long time. Uh, haven't shot video on them. A frequent question that we get is about rotating electrical connectors or slip rings. I've got a few of our electrical connectors on the table here. Um, this is how you keep from getting twisted up on your wind turbines. Um, you know, this little part I have heard uh, varying comments on that, you know, some of them I agree with, some of them I disagree with, some I'm ambivalent on. I'm just going to show you the product, what it is, what it does, what it has done for me, and what I would suggest that you do. Um, if you put a wind turbine in the air and, you know, if you flip a coin a hundred times, you know, it, it, the chance that you're going to get 50-50 is pretty, you know, heads and tails is not, you know, it's not very likely. So over the years, you have a wind turbine in service. A lot of you are putting them up without slip rings. Some because you've heard that slip rings are bad, but... You know, here's your rotating electrical connector. This is the capsule. Um, this is the top spin. Your wind turbines that you will see from the factory come with the capsule inserted in this way down. Um, what I have done for years, and I have disassembled a wind turbine that I put up. This, is, this wind turbine, you can see the rust on the pole. This thing was up eight years. You know, I've heard that you need to install this like this to keep it from being waterproof. I'm going to talk on that a little bit. I mean, what I do is I just take a hole saw and we put this to the uh, board diameter of the capsule. And for me, this would go in here like so. And this would sit down. The outside diameter and you can see where this guy sat there, you know, no problems for years. Uh, part of the reason it looks it looks good, this has been encased in uh, heat shrink wrap, and this has had. Um, I, I did have to strip out the ends of the wires to take off the uh, the heat shrink butt splices on the turbine. Um, so, I mean, you are looking at newly stripped wires there, but I mean, this has been, um, this has been, had a couple layers of heat shrink throughout and as well, I, I, I usually put wire loom over the connectors that keeps, you know, UV protection on your wires, your wire loom, um, you know, even a lot of times I'll take a UV resistant paint and go over the wire loom after I put in one. Now, you know, for the guys that say you should stick the, you know, granted, if you go this way, you're not, I think it's IP67, you know, it's not rated that way. I can only tell you from my experience that, you know, this has been up eight years and it works great. I'll show you in a few minutes uh, that it works great. You know, the, the other way would be like so, you know, if you want to, if you want to install it like that, that's fine. Um, not, however, not with the configuration that I use, because if you put this into the turbine, the turbine will, you know, that that's the problem I've always had with installing these like such, because with a wind turbine, you're going to want to put a pipe on the cap. If you don't, you get water down the tower, you get hornets and bees building nests, so, you know, for me, we cap it. We put some silicone in there and we seal it. If you do not put, put the capsule orientated as such, I'll show you in a second. Here, we're bolted down, we're good, right? Here, just a quick demonstration. Uh, now, you might as well just run straight wires if you're going to do that. Unless you just want to leave this hanging loose in your tower and, you know, that 
that's not what I would suggest. That's that's problems to me as well. I believe if you if you go like so, nothing. Okay, might as well be you know not, you might as well not be putting anything in here to make this work like we have again. I've used wire loom. I've siliconed this. I, I've 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 protected it well, but you know I pulled. I could have pulled a nice new cap. You know, you can see this guy, that red wind turbine way back when that I painted a black check on. <laughs> that's where this came from. Now, on this capsule, just a quick. Here's our continuity meter. I suggest you use these before you put, you know, from the connections you make to the tower, you know, all the way back. You know, here's your continuity test through. We're black to black. Red to red. Let me grab that. And there you go. And some of these things that I've told you how to do things, you know, they're subjective. Uh, people like to do things different ways. This is this is how we do it. Um, it's not to say if somebody else has another way to do it. Never, you know, happy with that. Keep on doing it. Um, this is this is how we recommend putting the slip rings in. The second thing is. Even though these can, uh, a, a common misconception with wind turbines is that if you have a three-phase wind turbine and I have 60 amps, that means that exactly 20 amps goes through each conductor. That's not the case. There is a higher current flow on each wire. That is why with our 12 and 24 volt wind turbines that actually make power, we make lots of power here at Hurricane. So you cannot, you know, have the success, and this came out of a 48 volt wind turbine. What we like to do when we start putting the big blades on, when we run high voltage, 48, 110 volt, this is cool. And when we use the 12 and 24, what I like to do is put this guy in. And you'll see the, bo the bore diameter on this one is a little bit more than this one doesn't fit, right? This is what we had in there. A little bit, you have to cut a little bit more of the bore out. This is a six wire slipper ring. And what I recommend doing with the, when, when we're pulling 60 amps is we might take, uh, we might take green and yellow. Okay. Whatever, whatever color code makes sense to you, it's fine. We would put these in parallel. Same thing on the other side. Take your, blue and yellow, put them together, parallel, okay? Then maybe we would take the green and white and the red and black for, you know, and put those in pairs. And we would run each phase in parallel. Remember when you're running these uh, lower voltage turbines that run higher current, every, impediment that you put in the way is a bridge. Your pathway for the electrons to get to your charging source is only as strong as the weakest link. So, you know, we don't want to back up here no more than we want to back up in the rectifier, no more than we want to back up by not using the wire calculator and using the right size wire. Those will all be detrimental in, in your aspirations for making power with your wind turbines and renewable energy. Real quick, here we go, rotates. You know, these things, the, yeah, they, they have brushes in them, but you know, you gotta remember, you know, the cycle life on this thing, I don't know off the top of my head, but let me just put it to you in this context. It's not something that we're going to have to worry about, you know, running the brushes out on a wind turbine at least. You know, we're, we're going to get 20, if we get 20 rotations a day, um, you know, we're not, 
If your wind turbine turns around so many times that we burn the brushes up in the wind turbine and you have sized it properly, send me an email and we'll send you another part. That's how confident I am. We stand behind our stuff. So um, six wire slip rings, three wire slip rings. We got uh, custom stuff if you need something different. Links will be in the description. Hit me up till next time. Tony with Hurricane Wind Power. I hope we have put a little bit of a different spin on the rotating electrical connector, and we hope to see you at our website. Thank you.